I got, I got bit by a snake. Chip up poison. Poison? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I feel that. Chip up poison. That's definitely poison. Apparently, I'm immune to venom. Immune to venom? Immune, Steve. Years ago now, a small group of guys made a choice to drop the mundane, the expected, the normal, to pursue a dream of exploring this vast world. It didn't happen overnight. It took years. But slowly, weekend trip after weekend trip, through good times and bad, we gained the experience necessary to grow our dreams into a reality. We'll start Nick. Dude, Alaska. <laughs> a new team was formed to take on and film the adventure. <laughs> we traveled the entire Alcan Highway, experiencing its wonders, its people, and its wildness. Arriving above the Arctic Circle, at Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, the most northern end of the Pan American Highway. Then we pushed into the Yukon and north again to Tuk Toyuk Tuk at the end of the Dempster Highway. There, we were able to sit in with the local people and hear of their ways and let it make an impact on our lives, fueling our wanderlust for far off places, people, and cultures. In British Columbia, we became surrounded by the hardest conditions we had come by on the McKinsey Heritage Trail. We were pushed to our limits. We dealt with our first major injury, fuel issues, trail blocks, and fatigue until we finally found our escape. The experience bonded our friendships and love for adventure. Our Alaska expedition was just the beginning of a grander plan to document and film our adventures of the entire Pan American Highway. Now we only had one direction to go, south. And that means plunging into one of the most feared areas of the world to travel through, Central America. Over a year after the filming of our Alaska Yukon season, we have completed the planning and development of our next expedition. We will make our way to Baja, where we will explore to its southern end, hop a boat to mainland Mexico, and then push our way into our first international to international borders of Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and finally into Panama, where if all things go right, We'll end our expedition at the infamous Darien Gap, located at the heart of the drug war, all while filming a series undercover. Five years of work completed right here. Now we just have to deliver. <laughs> <laughs> no, pressure. Uh, no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> this year, we are proud to introduce not one, but two 2015 Forerunner Trail Edition Premiums to our fleet. These will be the lead vehicles for our expedition, hopefully hauling us and our precious gear to the southern end of the North American continent. These are not the first Forerunners we have ever owned, far from it. Between Jeff and I alone, we have owned three other Forerunners. We're big fans of the Forerunner to say the least. We're excited to put our new fifth gens through their paces. 
our 2015s have some pretty remarkable features. From the luxurious Softec seats to an amazing set of off-road functions ranging from a solid GPS system, locking rear differentials, A-Track, multi-terrain selections, and crawl control. Our Trail Premium editions are also equipped with KDSS that will aid in the overall road manners and handling of the vehicle. Okay, so let me fill you in on the vision behind the vehicle's builds this season. First off, we wanted to build a vehicle that reached an optimal level of function for up to 10 people to be living, working, sleeping, and filming out of for two straight months. We're less than a month away from our departure and we're just now getting into the trucks. And one of the first things that we're doing is installing uh, communication. So we're putting radios in with remote heads and uh, high altitude communications has come up. To put this in, and this is probably one of the biggest pieces that we can put in our vehicles, the ability to communicate with each other as we're going through some pretty remote territories, possibly dangerous territories. It's an essential part of getting these trucks ready for the expedition. Gosh almighty! <laughs> it's 9 a.m. and we're 14 days, 22 hours out from leaving on our Central America expedition. And we've finally been able to get to Dark Horse Customs uh, with all of our suspension, our tires, some of our tires came in today. And uh, now we can really start modifying the vehicles for the expedition proper. Between here, Tuesday and next Wednesday, these vehicles are going to completely transform from their stock form into an expedition equipped vehicle. Selectable dampening. We started the build with a foundation of high end suspension, equipping them with Icon Vehicle Dynamics Stage 7 suspension for the Forerunner with a special 25% increase in pressure per our expedition's requirements, meaning that this setup is fully capable of handling all the additional weight of the accessories to go on the vehicle, as well as allow the vehicle to perform under that final expedition weight. Next, we added a hidden winch mount to locate our worn winch securely behind the front grille, allowing us to keep the factory look of the forerunners. All that right there. <laughs> It was a strategic move in maintaining a softer profile in Central America. We then mount our wheels with our highly trusted General AT2 tire all-terrains and 285-70R17s or the equivalent to a 32.8 inch tire. General Tire is a longtime supporter of Expedition Overland and we are proud to have them as a presenting level sponsor for this year's expedition. For three straight days, we tirelessly worked, often late into the night. Things are moving right along, but I'm about to get some troubling news. Just got off the phone and got word that our shipment of um, stuff coming in from South Africa through Easy On and National Luna, so our rooftop tents, some awnings, roof racks, and some power supplies. Uh, the National Luna Power Pack and a dual battery system uh, didn't make the plane in South Africa on Tuesday. Yeah. Well, you want to hear a good a, a bit of news? <laughs> oh no, the camera's out. That's not good. Um, <laughs> it, it missed getting on an airplane because it was two inches too tall. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Yeah, the pallet is a real big pallet of stuff. So anyway, it doesn't leave till next Tuesday. It's currently Wednesday. And it takes 10 days to get to Salt Lake. So it's going to arrive on the 3rd of March, and we leave for our, on expedition on the 4th of March. So we're going to go down there to Salt Lake and put it, and on, put it on while on the expedition. Oh, crap. <laughs> and we still have to go to Prescott to get the drawers put in and get another tent down there and move it up to Salt Lake to stage for that. And we'll, we'll have to put lights on down there as well because we can't mount lights until we have roof rack. Right. Uh, the good news about that is also we don't have to take all three vehicles down to Prescott. We no, we're just have taking two. We just have to take the Tacoma yeah. and Rufio. 
Rufio is its name? Rufio. <laughs> Who dubbed that one? Me. I dubbed it. You dubbed it Rufio? Rufio. Oh. From Hook. Remember? Yeah. The kid in Hook? Yeah, Rufio. Rufio. I don't know if I'm sold. It'll grow on you. Okay. Next, Rufio rolled into SCS for this year's graphics. SES worked closely with us this year to design a wrap that would not be interpreted wrong at borders. We wanted to look cool, but not military. We also wanted them to feel approachable and not intimidating. The outcome was fantastic. But we still had some installs to go. So we headed on a 2,000 mile road trip before our 10,000 mile road trip, starting in Idaho Falls at CBI Off-Road to install our rear bumpers that will carry our spare tires out from under the vehicle and add some carriers for fuel and water jerrys and give us some solid protection and function to the rear of the forerunners. Well, we're in Salt Lake now, 10 days, 20 hours from departure on the Central America expedition, and we are still in as big of a crunch as ever to get everything done. So we're here at Cruiser Outfitters and I'd like to introduce Kurt, the new member of Expedition Overland that will be joining us for the full time on the trip and Paul May of Equipped Expedition Outfitters. And all three of us right now have been working together with our normal team here at XO to get these trucks built. So Paul's got stuff coming in from South Africa, hopefully leaving on a Delta Airline on Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. that will be here the day before we're supposed to leave on the expedition. No worries. There's 24 hours in there. Yeah. And if you wait to the last minute, it only takes a minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I met Kurt several years ago when we both traveled to central Russia to link up with our friends at Expedition 7 as they crossed the notorious Road of Bones in Siberia. What you need to know about Kurt is that he is sort of a genius. And now, Expedition Overland is privileged to have Mr. Encyclopedia Kurtanica as a member of our team. While Scott of High Altitude Communications slaved over radio programming, we couldn't help plugging in a Toyota Relic that sits in Kurt's shop, Ivan Iron Man Stewart's off-road race arcade game. Our hands pried from video game heaven, we put some heavy footed miles towards our next stop. Just rolling up to Adventure Trailers, eight days, 23 hours from departure for Central America. And uh, we're stopping in here all the way down in Prescott to get drawers put in this Forerunner and also the Tacoma. Here, I'm Jeff. Jeff from Mario. Nice to meet you. Mario. Hey. We have known Mario at Adventure Trailers for some years now and we had him look at our forerunners to compile a solution that would give us the greatest amount of livability and function out of Rufio and our Tacoma. The results are fantastic and are certain to be some of the best additions to our vehicles during the expedition. With time running thin, we headed out to our final stop in Las Vegas to meet with Eric the Hebrew Hammer, founder of Team 5. How did he get that name? Well, that's another story. You just need to know that Chuck Norris stole all his moves from this guy. He's a patriot and a legend. We will be linking up with him and his foundation, Team 5, in Guatemala in just about a month. Jeff and I took an advanced medical course known as a woofer or wilderness first responder course to help mitigate the larger medical concerns for a trip like this. Now, meeting with the hammer, we are very glad we did. Otherwise, we would have completely hit the I am an idiot bullseye. We are here today to get our med kits outfitted from Team 5's fantastic storage of medical supplies. I really hope we don't need any of this stuff. And who's sending you this stuff? Donors. Mm. Tons of donors and stuff like that. And are they like hospitals and 
things like that that this is extra supply. No, this is them. coming out of like you know on your airplane you have to have a they have to have an emergency room kit on every airplane. They have to uh -huh. have a huge thing on all the yachts yeah. and stuff like that. So every year they have to be reserviced. Uh -huh. So even though the drugs are still good, they all have to go back. They dump them all out. They put all new stuff on and send them off. So these are all not expired, brand new things that have never been opened. They just throw them in these vats. Huh. So instead of throwing it away, I ask them for it. Yeah. So that's that, smart. Yeah. And they just give me everything. I mean, you see, they throw everything away. <laughs> away. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing we then got quizzed on seemingly everything yeah, we knew as he casually yeah. rummaged through a million dollars yeah, worth of med gear. You guys, did you guys learn how to staple in Wolfer? No, no, but we have one stapler. That's a different style of stapler. So this is a stapler. So basically, it's really simple, man. It goes click. You know, you know, like. Do you remember from the whipper class if somebody gets a second chest wound? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys learn how to use uh, dental kits at all? No, we did not. Can you show us real quick? <laughs> I'm going to show you real quick. <laughs> somebody knocks a tooth out, there's a tooth saver. Oh, great. Oh. Yeah. So you're not supposed to put anything on the burn? Yeah. Yeah, you can put this stuff on there. Okay, so these are iodine swabs for um, your nose, like, like decongestion and stuff. Okay. You guys have any kind of CPR stuff? These are larger um, burn. Oh, yeah. Here's a good thing too. This is, you guys know Sam's plant? Sam's plant. Yeah. So here's a Sam's plant. It doesn't like taste the best, mm -hmm. but if you need like a boost of energy, this is this is like do what, what what the runners use. Yeah. So this is Cipro. Here's some alcohol wipes. This is lice treatment. Uh -huh. Sterile star gloves. Nice. Yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> <That's a monitor. laughs> I think we're gonna need this for Jeff's shoes. This one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for Jeff's shoes. Biohazard. Maybe. Biohazard. So with Eric, we'll see you in 27 days in right. Guatemala. Yeah, 27 days. Sounds Thanks for good. scaring the crap out of me. Yeah. <laughs> to the airport. Yeah. <laughs> Wait till we get there. <laughs> Scared is putting it lightly compared to the knot in both Jeff and I's stomach as we pulled away. It's five o'clock and we've got to get back over a thousand miles to Bozeman by tomorrow night so that we can get registrations done on the vehicles that I'm pumping fuel in right now in order to get our transport sheet papers correctly done before the time we meet the border, seven days. So pressure's on and it's an all-nighter. Okay, so I went outside to get a camera and told Toby to stop talking because he was telling me something that needs to be on camera. What's going on? I bought a car, had dealer plates. The plates were good until um, December 26th or something. I got pulled over December 18th or 17th or something. And he said, you have to have your plates on, like your regular plates. Mm -hmm. And he said, you're not allowed to have those on for a long time, but he didn't look at the date that they're still valid until the dealer plates are. So. It was just a fix-it ticket, and he said, any any cop, you can find any cop, they'll sign off on it, you just mail it in after that. I talked to two separate cops in different counties and asked them if they would do it. They said, we can't do that, it's out of our jurisdiction. You have to drive to Reading to get that done. So I just put the plates on, took pictures of the plates, and then called Shasta Court, and they're like, I'm sorry, no one can talk to you. Do you want to pay money? Push one. So there's like one option, is either pay money or go to jail. So I, they're like, or email us at, traffic at ShastaCourts.com or whatever. So I emailed them pictures of my plates on the car and said, hey, if there's any, like, if this works, great. If not, let me know what I need to do. No response. So the next response I get is this letter, which is a beautiful little thing that says, Superior Court of Shasta, California. Uh, violations, VC5200A and VC40508A, failure to appear in court. And that means that my uh, license is suspended indefinitely and I have to go to court or pay four hundred and seventy six dollars well, that's pretty awesome that we just drove two thousand miles with that <laughs> with a possible me being arrested you would have been arrested if we got pulled over you would have been arrested and put in jail and I wouldn't have known why 
How are you gonna squeeze in all your community service before we leave? It's one of those things that adds a little bit of tension. By the way, our stuff didn't leave South Africa. Stuff. What? I'm going to jail, we're not sleeping in tents. <laughs> we don't have our titles. We don't have our titles. Maybe that means you have time to figure it out. The thing is, from the get-go... Things uh, are getting really crazy. We still have a ton of work to do, like get international driver's licenses, finalize our titles for the forerunners, so we can actually get through the borders ahead. Perfect, thank you. I'm legit. Officially legit. We're gonna go get some shots today. And I'm not excited about it. I hate needles. And I have to get a series of them before I leave. This is nervous. Moving, moving cat. Being cat crazy right now. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. When I was a kid, they used to strap me down to a board to do this. Those are both what you get from contaminated food and water. Jeff had no trouble with the task at hand. I thought you were going to be more dramatic. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel a little, a little safer that, you know, I'll at least come back. And I probably won't come back sick. Yeah. So can I go ahead and sit down? Nope. Sure. <laughs> Toby, on the other hand. I'm assuming you don't like needles. I hate them. <laughs> I like them when they have ink in them. Okay. But not when they go into your uh, muscle. Yeah. Do you have trouble? Have you ever fainted or anything like no. that? No. Okay. Maybe. So if you want to close your eyes or look away, that's usually helpful. Yep. Just massaging right now. Okay. okay. Ask you to take a deep breath. Deep breath in. Okay, hold on. It's cat power. <laughs> Kitty power. Yep. Is that your power I'm animal? Channeling then? my power animal. Frank over here. Little Lucy's as drugged as I am. I've never overcome my fear of needles. I've tried. But yet you have tattoos. It's different. How so? Because they don't go into your meat and inject things into you. I think it's the the thought of it. The thought and the... It's probably an irrational fear. And out. Oh, done. Oh. <laughs> oh. Boy, do I feel like a horse is patootin'. <laughs> Made a big deal out of nothing. It is nothing. <laughs> I know. Uh, we just found out we got our title work in, so I'm going to the courthouse to sign off on the registration so we can get that paperwork processed. Uh, we're four days out from leaving, so paperwork I signed today still has to go to Deer Lodge, which is a couple hours away, and then we get our titles from there. So we're gonna sign off on this and then we might have to just physically take it to Deer Lodge herself uh, instead of sending it through the mail. Getting the title work completed on time is the first of two top priorities. The second being the pallet of equipment that contains our roof racks, tents and awnings, etc., currently held up and shipping somewhere in South Africa. Where are we at? Uh, where are we at? It, I don't know, I don't even know what day it is right now or how many hours we got left, but... Uh, I just got an email saying that our tents, that whole pallet of stuff coming in from South Africa was missed again. They just forgot about it. They put it on the plane. So now they're going to try and get it on tonight's plane. And if it misses tonight's plane, it'll postpone the expedition an entire week. And if it's postponed an entire week, that means, I don't know. I don't have a plan B, honestly because there are hard points along the expedition now that are set in stone that I can't move without major, major ramifications. Back at the house, myself and the hometown crew members gathered to go over our gear and make final decisions and modifications to that which we can address right now.
So we're packing up, finishing up. We have the last few things here, and it's just chaos so that we don't forget anything. Hopefully we won't. More than likely we will. I forgot to take my last bit of medication this morning, and the rest of that's not going to happen. So hopefully I don't get typhoid. All right, so I've been trying to figure out our tool roll for this trip. And, of course, I want to take everything. But as I'm rolling this thing up, I'm actually paring down a lot, which is great for us for saving space. I'm also thinking we have two brand new Forerunners and a you know a Tacoma that's only two years old. So the the odds of things going really wrong are pretty slim. But in the back of your mind, you're always thinking, what if things really go wrong? So um, you know we want to cover electrical stuff because we got to have a lot of electrical needs. That's small stuff. But as far as big tools go. I think we're gonna be all right with just just our small stuff and leave a lot of the big things out. So, should we carry jack stands? I feel like we should carry jack stands, but I don't know if we have the room. If we if it comes down to like what if we Red Bull one? or jack stands, <laughs> I'm gonna say Red. <laughs> <laughs> He'll sleep in here. Hopefully, get enough air current so he doesn't die in the heat. It's hard to think that way because right now it's what. 20 degrees and it's going to be 90 and 100 percent humidity mm -hmm. in two weeks a week it's inside on the counter need it your side here i'll grab the door for you oh put look it on. nothing can bite you Is this my sleep sack <laughs> It's Alaska all over again. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, get... I remember trying to film it like this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's try them. Ooh. Oh, that's how those work. And then this you can pull towards you. Yeah. When you shut it. We worked very hard this year to develop systems around just about everything. <laughs> that's sweet. And that's how you don't get malaria. That's how you don't get malaria. Dung dungy fever. For our expedition, we have limited everyone's individual space to one of these Red Ox flying boxcar bags. Every person got their own color of bag, so it's assigned to somebody, so you can say, can you grab my bag? Within a, within a week or so, you'll know who's Toby's and who's Jeff's and who's mine and all that stuff, so it forces everyone to really have to think through their equipment before they get on the expedition, because it has to fit in this size of a bag. That also helps in limiting how much you go digging for things when you're trying to do your job and be on an expedition. Yeah. So we need to keep in mind as we're packing, how do we fit Team 5's gear in here? Okay. I like yep. to organize and trying to figure out where those bags will go. She's good at it. So that means we might have to pare down some of our stuff too. So we'll figure that Jeff out. Jeff has offered to take one outfit. It's true. <laughs> I have some Daisy Dukes. They're pretty good. G-rated show. Oh. They're G-rated Daisy Dukes. Okay, good. No worries. <laughs> Is there a such thing? <laughs> <laughs> Outside, Rhonda introduces new team member Kyle Gunnarsson to the galley. This is nice, like being able to cook here, prep here. Pull food out. Yeah, pull food out, be able to set it up here, and then all while being able to be in the protection of shelter. Rhonda listens to Kyle and his ideas and gives him the final okay on his thoughts on how the galley should be set up. Well, I'm handing off the torch for this expedition to Kyle um, and Ty. Ty already did it with the Alaska expedition, but um, mostly what I had to plan for this trip was what we'd call just backup meals because your plan's gonna be finding food in the markets as they yep. go through Central America. But if for some reason they get out a few days somewhere, then we've got the mountain house meals. You just add water. <laughs> um, I can is... do that. <laughs> <laughs> I am intimidated for cooking for six other guys, but good thing I have strong and sturdy tie next to me. Don't let you know? Ty chop it again. <laughs> Did he do something on the last trip? Yeah. It's questionable. He took his own leg out with his own machete in his own hand. <laughs> yeah. Beaten potatoes. That's it. Yeah, that old guy. Returning member Ty will be joining us for the first half of this trip before our good friend Steve swaps him out in Belize. A few last minute meetings and tasks are at hand. 
but the time to leave is growing near. I believe our tents are being picked up in two hours from the airport. Wow. Yes. <laughs> from At least they're Johannesburg. Here. My wife Rochelle was okay. still on her way back from Deer Lodge, Montana, after picking up our titles, the number one priority to our departure. So, crossing my fingers and praying that they are here and I can leave and go back home and everything will be good and the guys can get out the door. I drove to Deer Lodge, I walked in the office and she's like, here you go. And I wanted to kiss her and I grabbed that and came back. <laughs> and we have laminated extra license plates. Okay. for the appropriate vehicle. Okay. And then behind that are additional copies of the other two vehicles' titles. With our titles in hand, our paperwork was finished. We need to put on one last push to get out the door. Now it's a bittersweet moment, a time to embark on our big trip. It's, it's a little bittersweet. The original plans for the trip was that Ron and Rochelle were going to join us on this trip, but now things we took, got, took a we turn got and, to go. <laughs> and we decided to go to two different paths. We've been talking about Central America for, what, a year and a half, two years, ever since we got home from Alaska? Yeah. And the past six months I was just feeling, um, just a gut feeling like I, I really wanted to go but just not feeling like it was the right time for us to go for some reason, especially me personally. Came to Rhonda and said, well, I, I have something to tell you. And, Turns and she out. just goes, oh, I'm so glad because I have the same feeling. <laughs> we're actually going to be doing our own adventure at the same time. Um, we were going to be going back to Morocco to race in the uh, 25th anniversary of the Rally Asia de Gazelles. Yep, it's really important to us. This will be my third time going and this will be around a second. We're really excited. It's important that all of us are able to pursue our dreams. The Rally Asia de Gazelles has really captivated Rochelle and Rhonda. But the decision for them to go this year wasn't easy. My response to the girls not going has been um, kind of a roller coaster on thoughts and feelings. I, want, I mean, obviously you want your wife to go with you on a cool adventure. Uh, we had reservations for security reasons. Uh, and it goes beyond just the country, being in another country together. You know, Mexico and Central America has its own inherent risks, for sure. Uh, but it also put both parents on a pretty aggressive, could be considered aggressive, expedition. Uh, with our kids back at home. So my thought was, you know, maybe one of us would stay back and, and share the home front. Well, that didn't necessarily jive either with uh, all of our hopes and dreams that we have going on. And the girls, and my wife in particular, she needs to be able to pursue her adventures just as I am able to pursue mine. Over a year ago, uh, Ron and I really felt like they were coming back and racing again this year. So, yeah. They're racing, yep. we're going to Central America, and we'll meet up on the uh, backside. Yeah. So we had a lot of people ask if we could film it the last time we went, and so we we're trying really hard to get it filmed this time, so if you, we can share what this rally truly is and mm -hmm. show you how hard it really is. Yeah. <laughs> it's totally easy. Yeah. If you take a year and a half of work, and it only comes down to being an hour and a half late, that's not bad. Yeah. Is there, okay, is there anything we're missing? <laughs> From this point on, we all fully admit that if we don't have it, we don't have it. Done. It, it is what it is. At this point, this is the moment that anyone who was supposed to remember anything was supposed to be right now. Right. <laughs> and if we didn't, we don't have it, we don't have it. Yeah? Sounds good. I forgot Did everyone that. have their passports? Let's see. This, this is the rest of our kids. <gasps> Where is that? Oh. Thank you for allowing me to lead you. And let's go kick some butt. Yeah. <laughs> Have some fun. And uh, let's be safe and come home. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Come on, yeah. Have fun. Yeah. You're going to do amazing.
top 20. Yeah. That's my goal. You have fun, okay? All right. So. Yeah, Are we in trouble, officer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're rolling. This is awesome. We're on we our go. way. A close friend, Eric, a local sheriff deputy, has assigned a special detail to him and to us to ceremoniously escort us safely to the county line. At that county line, Eric's light signified the official start to our expedition. Expedition decisions started right, right away. Guys, we got the latest update on our shipment of roof racks and rooftop tents and awnings. And it's still on the ground in Los Angeles. So it is scheduled to arrive tomorrow at 2 p.m. I proposed that uh, we stop for the night, say like in Pocatello, get a good night's sleep because there's no need to push hard into Salt Lake tonight. What do you guys think? Yeah, this is Apollo. We think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I think we'll need all the energy we can get tomorrow. Uh, we just showed up at Cruiser Outfitters and we have a few errands to run, so we're going to split and do that. But our purpose here is to get our roof racks and tents and uh, light bars on today. All of it on today. Welcome, guys. Come on in. You want to get a rig in here? Uh, let's see. Yes, maybe. Can we come up with a game plan? Let's come on in. This was our last day to make sure we got everything taken care of. So, Paula, we can come in. We can do that one. Just get that. Do we need to run our errands? I think we can do errands with Rupio and get one truck. The guy that uh, Land Air Express gave me no information as to the exact timing of the truck moving from them to Delta. Okay. So it takes a little while, maybe within the hour, but it will be this afternoon. Is what they said. But they built in Salt Lake, so we're uh, we're here, right yeah, at least as far as I know, it should be at the Land Air desk right now. 1300 pound pallet just came off the truck so he's getting it loaded on his little trailer and he's bringing it over in his forerunner and it should be here in about 20 minutes so in the film business we have a lot this thing called hurry up and wait there's a lot of hurry up and wait that's exactly what we've been doing today waited all day did a little couple more tinker things and now it's go time it's ready to get these trucks finished and gone There he is. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. What a week. <laughs> totally looks like a box. Oh, wow. Cool. There she is. The dismantling of a crate was exhilarating. I would equate it to the feeling of unwrapping a Christmas miracle. The Cruiser Outfitter shop was in full swing as a selfless crew of volunteers and fellow adventurers helped us assemble and install the equipment to help our expedition get underway. We are truly thankful for all those folks and what they did for us. It's going to be like 4.875. Everyone calling that good? Man, it's like you got a degree in engineering. The forerunners took their final form, and they were something to behold. Now, only the Tacoma's roof racks remain to be installed. At this point, it's 2 in the morning. There's no need for all of us to stay up, and I'm concerned about just making sure all of us have enough sleep. So Kurt, Paul, and I will stay up and keep working on the forward rack here, and then you guys can rack out so we can make a big push tomorrow towards Mexicali.
It's 2 a.m. I'm feeling like uh, the bed's calling me. I need to go find it and go to sleep because I am tired. <laughs> yeah. The final bit to our. Yeah. Now we can go. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. The final shipment for the expedition. Just in the nick of time, we're one hour from a D-Day. On another phone call, we're hoping to not have to make. <laughs> Down to the hour, literally. <laughs> We were supposed to have a briefing on our schedule and like where we're going and the route, but we didn't. And so I, I really don't know where we're going. We drove hard through the night to just north of the Mexican border, where we had a very important meeting. It was just us crew now, and we were about to enter Mexico and start the international portion of the expedition. I invite you now to join this meeting. Something that I wanted to touch on more than anything is situational awareness. So just understanding that, you know, in any situation, just kind of keeping that um, tactical mindset of, all right, if the poop hits the fan today, this is how we're going to get out of here quickly. Um, so, for instance, right now, the taco is going to have a hard time getting out of that out of, out of that area really quickly. He's going to throw in reverse and get out of there. So I would like to see just a practical thing is just parking in a way that everybody can get out of Dodge real quick if we have to. So borders, gentlemen, we've got a lot of borders across in the next month here. Uh, eight, eight borders each way. Um, we may bounce in between a couple countries too, so we may hit a few more. Borders can be an extremely frustrating process because it can take anywhere from two hours on the low side to four, maybe six hours to get through two borders. You gotta realize we gotta exit one country, uh, get through all their paperwork process, have the vehicle searched, inspected, we got a lot of stuff in the vehicle. They may want us to pull all that out, put it on the ground, and they're gonna pick and choose one or two bags and maybe go through it, maybe not, and say, get out of here. You got a lot of stuff, beat it. Uh, but it could take a while. So we just need to be patient, keep a smile on. That's the best medicine at a border is just, you know, keep a smile on, act like you're having a good time, thank them for their service. They're just there to do their job. Uh, the, the three vehicle drivers are gonna have one additional step, and that's importing and exporting the vehicle into each country as well. Each of us needs to get a tourist visa. So on your person, you need to carry that tourist visa at all times. Once we have the tourist visas, then the drivers can apply for temporary vehicle import on the vehicle. We can maybe do that at the border, we're hoping. Uh, the alternative is we're gonna have to go find a bank of Andresito in town and uh, do that process in town. Uh, obviously your, your passport should always be on you at all times with your tourist visa in there. If we get stopped at any point, which we will, absolutely undoubtedly, we're gonna get stopped probably three or four times uh, just even in the, the Baja section. It's just gonna be a simple police checkpoint. It's actually a military checkpoint. So those are just young soldiers out there. They're super nice guys. They're just doing their job. They're gonna maybe wanna pop doors open. They'll look under seats, open the glove box. It's gonna be completely random, but again, we have nothing to hide. So just let them look wherever they want. They, once they're cleared with you, they want you out of there. So clear the checkpoint, pass down the road, maybe just even a couple blocks if it's appropriate, if there's a good pullover spot. And then we'll all regroup and pull up together. If we come up to an area that has like a checkpoint that's kind of random and weird, we want to stay in the vehicle as much as possible, leave the engines running, leave it in gear, that kind of a thing, until they ask you to get out of the vehicle. You stay there running, and then you take everything with you. You don't give them the keys. No, absolutely never should you surrender your keys. They should never even take your passport unless you're right there with them. You know, they're gonna take it, look yeah. at it, hand it right back. Don't let them walk off your passport. Something like that's happened, you know, happen and get get attention of everyone else in the group and make sure that, you know, that's how a little extortion or bribe can happen. So they'll walk off with your passport and then all of a sudden they want you to pay a fine or a you know a fee or a convenience fee of some sort to get your passport or driver's license back. So let's have fun. Yeah, yeah let's here do we it. go. Nice. This is actually huh. like and we've said it like six times, like, we're actually doing it. Yeah. <laughs> we're actually doing it. Yeah. yeah. Now we're doing it. As we head to the border, all sorts of feelings and emotions swirled within our minds. Excitement, fear, wonderment, and the full weight and anticipation of the adventure to come. Over the next two months, we are about to embark on the adventure of our lives. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all of us. From 
up Koyuktuk or Prudhoe Bay, Alaska, all the way down the uh, North American continent to this point. I was cringing for the man. We invite you to join us as we push our limits and see this big, diverse world. Here we are. At the base of the cauldron of an active volcano. We hope you learn from our mishaps, take inspiration from our accomplishments, and realize that life needs to be taken by the horns, because life is short. I tried to find you, but I can't see the sun.